Vuex4 is a state management library for Vue applications. It serves as a centralized store for all of the components in your application with rules to ensure that the state can only be mutated in a predictable fashion. It integrates with the Vue's official dev tool extension and comes with some advanced debugging features such as state snapshots. When deciding to use Vuex, it comes down to having to learn new concepts and more boilerplate code for better long-term productivity. Today, we'll be creating a simple counter app from scratch to learn the basics of using Vuex4 with the Vue 3 Composition API. We'll start by taking a look at Vuex concepts like state, getters, and mutations, and how to use these within the Options API. Then we'll switch over to the Composition API and implement the same functionality. We will also create some reusable helper functions to make accessing the store in the Composition API more readable. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and check out some of my other Vue videos. I've added timestamps and links to the full source code in the description below. Let's get started creating our project using the Vue CLI tool. Make sure you select manual features and enable Vuex when creating your app. Opening up the folder, you'll notice the tool created a store folder inside our project. A store contains five sections, state, which is the source of the truth that drives our application. You can think of this similar to the data object in a Vue component. We'll add a counter, which has an initial value of 10. Getters, which are computed properties based on your state. We'll create a getter, which accepts the state as the first parameter and multiplies the counter by two. Mutations, which are methods called to change or update your state. We'll need to create a mutation to set the value of our counter. This function takes two arguments, the state and any input passed in by the user. You'll soon realize you can't call a mutation directly, but instead you can call a mutation type which calls this handler. Lastly, actions, which are async functions that call mutations. We won't be dealing with any async functions such as calling a backend API, so we won't be adding any actions to our application. You can also add modules that allow you to create child stores for better separation of concern. Once again, we won't be creating any today since it would overcomplicate our application. Overall, you can think of the Vuex store as a component without any template or style. It comes with helper functions to access it in any other component you'd like. When Vue components retrieve state from it, they will reactively and efficiently update as the store state changes. We'll start by using the Vuex store using the Options API, and then we'll do the same using the Composition API. I've gone ahead and created a simple component that calls a function when a button's clicked. In the Options API, you can access the component using this $store, which contains the store we created earlier. It allows you to access the state and getters as you can see. For updating the counter, we will need to use the commit function to set the counter. As you can see, we must pass in the type of mutation and then any arguments. This will happen whenever we click on the button. And that's really all there is to it. We've created a component that accesses and updates the Vuex store. But you'll notice the code isn't that clean. And if we needed to access multiple states, getters, or mutations, this can quickly become hard to follow. To solve this, Vuex comes with some helper map functions. This allows us to access the Vuex store as if it was already a part of the current component. For state, we can use the map state function where we pass in the name of the variables we would like to access. It returns a generated computed getter for each of these elements. Now, if we type this.counter, it will return the value in the Vuex store. We can do the same thing with getters using the map getters function. For mutations, we can use the map mutations functions, which maps component methods to the store.commit function we called earlier. Now our component is more readable. Now that we understand the basics of accessing Vuex in a component, let's take a look at doing the same thing for the composition API. To access the store within the setup hook, we can call the useStore function. This is the equivalent of retrieving the store using this $store in the options API. In order to access state and getters, we'll use a computed reference to retain reactivity. This is the equivalent of creating a computed property using the options API. When accessing mutations, we can simply provide the commit function inside the setup hook. 
Sadly, with the Composition API, we don't have any helpers like the map functions above. There is currently an issue open to add helper functions for the Composition API. For this example, we're going to create our own since they're not available yet. We'll start by creating a useState function that accepts an array of state keys and returns a computed ref for each of the properties in the array similar to the mapState function. We can map each key into a key value pair where the key is the name of the property and the value is the computed ref for the property in the state. We can use the objects.from entities to convert the array of key values into an object. The useGetter hook will be the exact same except it will create a computed property using the getters. For the useMutations, we'll map each key to a function which calls the equivalent commit function and passes the input along. Switching back to our component and using these hooks, you can see that our code has become a lot more readable. And we are done. We've created two components that access the Vuex store using the Options API and the Composition API. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Hope to see you in the next one.